Hello there, it's me, Rama, and I wanted to demonstrate for you today a new feature that I've added to my editor plugin. The editor plugin currently is a vertex snap editor feature, and you can uh, actually just click on different vertices and snap them to other points. Uh, you can actually pick from among many different vertex uh, shapes. <laughs> you have different preferences. Uh, I actually really like the square one a lot, um, but I think I'll go across for now, just for simplicity's sake. So, uh, you can snap stuff. That's something you're probably familiar with. That's not new. The new thing is I've made a new feature to take a whole bunch of static meshes and convert them into a single instance static mesh, enormously saving on performance if you can have all of your scene have a large number of meshes that are all using one material and one mesh then you are going to want to play with this this is uh, an enormous performance improvement and i'm going to demonstrate how right now so let's and you can use my new feature with the vertex snapping so you edit you create the instant static mesh using regular meshes and then you multiply them out Although I think what I'm going to do here is uh, I want to show you that you can also scale stuff. So I'm going to make these bigger and rotate them. And uh, you can also do asymmetric scaling in instant static meshes. So you can elongate. So you've got quite a lot of room for variety, even though you're limited to using just the one static mesh that you're creating instances of, you can still get a lot of variety in by using asymmetric scaling. You know, like, I can, you know, really go wild. And this is just a simple cube. I could have used a shape that lended itself better to getting a lot of variety with different scaling options. But, uh, this is a good starting point. I don't like this thing here. I want this down here. And uh, let's now, let's see, I want to elongate this one. So here, so this is a good fundamental unit. Uh, let's actually multiply these out. So my point is that at this number of meshes, it's not really a big deal to have them all be individual static mesh actors. However, I'm going to make it a big deal <laughs> by making a whole lot of them. So let's see. I don't want the floor. Floor, what are you called? So I have all these static meshes here. And I'm going to multiply them. And multiply them again. Let's actually angle these. Multiply again. So I'm making a more complex number of these things. And uh, you'll see, I guess I'll demo now what what I'm going for, and then you'll get a sense of the larger scale once I fully flesh it out. So here we have 85. Let's see, how many selected? We have 75 static mesh actors. Now watch this. In my editor feature, I have this new option. You can press the I key or Shift I to reverse the procedure to create a single static mesh out of all of these objects. So I'm going to press the I key. Now look, there's only one now. Look at the scene. Two out of eleven actors now, right? So there's just a, a complete change, and let me demonstrate something. The collision is perfect, even though I have. Oh my god, I forgot to set custom gravity. Hold on. <laughs> One moment, please. Let's see. Scale, gravity. Gravity scale 3. <laughs> Alright. Now let's try again. So, I have this, uh, Every, all these instance, all, so this is now one object, one instant static mesh, and you can see I've got all this nice variety with just asymmetric scaling, 
and uh, that's not really the whole point of this though. You'll see the point in a second. So now I'm going to I reactivated my editor mode. I'm going to do Shift plus I to undo. Look, now I have all those actors back. Now I'm going to select them all, except the go A lore and the cone. And now, party gets started. Let's see how long it takes to get you four to notice what I'm doing. I got to a thousand in one of my other tests before I had FPS issues. Okay, so that's good. Alright, so I don't know about you, but I think we're gonna speed this up by doing this. Where did a lord go? Oh, yeah, this thing. How do you. Oh, doesn't matter. So we're at. 300 or so, so let's multiply that up. Okay, and notice the FPS is starting to get a little upset with what I'm doing. Okay, let's do that. Alright, so now let's do it again. Now imagine that these are all pretty mountains, and you, I was making this really pretty mountain range or something, and uh, this would make more sense. Or you might actually have a game where this is the art style. But watch this. Now, you four is going to be upset with me. Alright, so now I'm cruising at around 10 FPS. Now, the, this is, if you had individually highly rendered actors, like you had static meshes that were very complex, this would be fine. But I have 1500, 1500 static mesh actors that I'm currently looking at in this scene. I have a pretty good uh, GPU on this and it doesn't normally have issues <laughs> with scenes. Uh, FPS is really always quite high but I'm starting to really struggle here at almost uh, yeah about 1500 static mesh actors. Now you see my FPS now watch this. It's all gonna get better in a second. Alright, watch this. So again, I have this feature to turn all the meshes in the scene or that you have selected into a single static, me uh, instant static mesh. Watch the FPS and you get a good view on that. Alright, ready? One, two, three, go! Look! You see that jump? Also, there's only 11 actors in the scene again. Look at that jump. But the best part, watch this. Are you ready? I can play! In this scene with all this collision, I have all this physics collision going on just fine. Look. Ah. Okay, emergency save. I have all this collision, all of this is individual, very precise, very good collision. And the FPS is very happy. Of course, the FPS is a little bit less than max because I'm recording, but, uh, if I wasn't recording, yeah, my FPS would be back to complete total max. And you can play in this world like this. You can have, you can do whatever you want here. This is fully serviceable terrain in an instant static mesh format. Now, the what I'm presenting with this editor plugin is the ability to do all this with just the press of a key. So there's one other thing to consider. So you'd say this is great. I have this nice big one object. What if I need to change one of the meshes here? Like, just one of these blocks. Let's say this one block. Let's say we need to change it. It's no problem. Watch this. So, victory, I do remember I can do shift plus I to undo. So now I have those, all those actors came back. I can click on this one that I want to change. Lift it up. And scale it. And let's just say that was the perfect edit. That was exactly what I wanted to do. Right, let's make it the perfect edit. Hold on. Of course, my FPS is not happy this whole time. All right. So let's say that is the perfect edit, right? All right. Let's go back. Select all these actors. Come on, thing. <laughs> Having trouble selecting with all this stuff going on. All right. So notice FPS is really having a problem. Now, 
the whole point of my editor feature. Just one. As I was saying, the whole point of my editor feature, I'm down to this really low FPS. Remember, this is a completely reversible process. I can undo it or redo it at any time. So, reviewing from the previous, uh, what I was just doing before, I made this one edit to one single instance in this entire complex shape. And now, just one key press. Press the I key. Look! Back to max. FPS is over 100 at times. And I'm not cheating. There's just a, one restriction, which of course is that you can only use a single static mesh. But if that static mesh has multiple materials in it, it does well with asymmetric scaling. Or your game world is fine with a bunch of uh, repetitive shapes like this. Then this is something you should really check out. It comes with my editor plugin now. It's free. It's uh, I spent all afternoon making this uh, new feature, and it works. And look at the collision. The collision's my favorite part because you know games come down to gameplay, and that means collision and game mechanics, uh, and of course having a nice art style. But uh, if you can get away with using one mesh like this, then you definitely want to check out this simple little feature I'm providing you with for free. Again, if you have a more complex art style and you have a bunch of mountains in a mountain range and you you can scale and rotate the mountains a bunch and then just make this cool little mountain range, you can turn all those into a single static mesh, instant static mesh. So huge performance advantage to using this structure and uh, I actually had submitted a pull request to make it possible to use the, all this stuff in world space to create the instances in world space. If you're uh, more into the engine code, that's how I'm doing it. I'm actually getting all the world space transforms of each of the static mesh actors and then using uh, add instance in world space. And that was actually something I had submitted to the engine and Epic accepted so that I could do this. <laughs> And now I finally finished that. That was like many months ago. Now I finally finished what I was trying to accomplish, which is instant static mesh editor with the complete and total freedom and power of editing regular static mesh actors, but then turning it into a single mesh when you're all done. And now, minus recording, my FPS is max, and I can go play in this world. So, you have this at your disposal now. You can just get my editor feature for free, my editor plugin and uh, just click on stuff, look for this victory editor hotkeys thing, and then I or shift I, and then you can do everything you saw in this video. Enjoy!